I feel like we're building people. We're building people, we're building lives. We were able to put him in an internship at a local hospital. Just think about how he felt about himself and how he still does. He's, he's been there, I think almost a year now, still George has at that hospital. And, uh, and again, it's, it's changed his life. I'm Robert Johns. I work at Scenic View Academy. It's a transitional school in the Provo area and I'm an employment specialist. So I do career counseling and work training and helping students to become employable. The majority of our students are on the autism spectrum. Probably about 75 to 80% of our students are on the spectrum. And one thing that we sometimes say is the rest of the students just don't know it yet. Maybe they're undiagnosed. Um, but, but in reality, they're not all on the spectrum, but, but many are, and those who are not. Um, some have challenges with ADHD, and other learning challenges um, that kind of prevent them from reaching the full potential that they would like. Uh, my original plan was I was gonna write advertising. I was gonna go to New York and take the world by storm. It just so happened that um, about the time that I was graduating, my wife and I were expecting our first child. And so that was not good timing to really leave her here in Utah and go out to New York for an internship. But I guess taking a step back to that, as I was, I was, as I was working at the MTC, I also was, I did an internship with March of Dimes, and um, I was working a part-time job at Northern Utah County Training Center for about, the, I think, the last semester that I was in school. So it was a really busy time because we had, we had a baby on the way. I was working two part-time jobs and taking my last few classes in school. And it really seemed like everything that I was doing with the internship and with the job and, and still working at the MTC at that time, you know, everything I was doing outside of school was really focused on, on helping other people um, that had special needs or challenges. And I really found a lot of satisfaction in, in trying to help them um, really to reach their potential or, or to kind of understand what their potential could be. Um, when I was in college, well even before college is the beginning, but I guess when I was in college I was studying communications. Um, before that, what I really pin it down to is I worked for four summers at a scout camp, a boy scout camp, and really, really enjoyed that. And each year I remember that there was a special needs troop that would come up to our scout camp and it was just so fun to be around them. Uh, they were just so just so loving and pure and, and, and innocent and, and just real. But uh, just working with that special needs troop, I think got me interested in, in doing something really helping others. And then later, um, after I served my mission, I worked at the Missionary Training Center, the MTC in Provo. And when I was hired there, I worked in a department called the Missionary Development Center. And in the Missionary Development Center, what we did is we did learning skills testing and uh, also learning styles um, testing and training with missionaries who were struggling. The, I think the biggest thing for me, I just really, I find it very meaningful to see the changes in people's lives, to see as, as I work with students, as I help them to get a job, um, there's kind of a slogan or a motto that we have in our employment department at Scenic View where we say work changes lives. And I see that in our students that as they have success at work, as they gain employment skills, and as they become employable at a little bit higher level as they go along, there's a sense of identity, there's a sense of purpose, there's a sense of contribution for them to give back and to do something meaningful and to support and take care of themselves. So these are young adults we're working with, and so it's very gratifying for me as a professional to see how it really empowers them to become employable not only empowers them, but it also enriches the quality of their life and, and helps them to understand who they are and to, to really make more out of their life and their situation. And so that's really a, a big payoff that I see every time, whether we, um, one of the things we do is we place people on internships. So even if it's an internship, even if it's not a paid job yet, um, just seeing them have success and build their confidence and and really have a better life is really what keeps me going. And there's a young man that I'll call Frank, 
Frank was probably a little bit more on the lower end intellectually with his schooling to where I think his, his reading level was maybe a third or fourth grade, which is lower than many of our students. And so it was really hard to know where to direct him. Um, we asked, as we did career counseling, he wanted to work at Disneyland and be an Imagineer. Now there's a lot that goes into that and, and a lot of higher education. And, and so we worked with him for a while to see if what education he could do, could he prepare for, for going to college or anything like that. And, and after a couple of years working with him, it was clear that college was not gonna happen for him. And so rather than focus on what he couldn't do, we were able to focus on what he did well. He had a really tremendous work ethic. He was really good at organization and he was extremely dependable and very positive. And so we took some of those things and he went through our work program at our school and he did really well in the custodial area. Uh, but we didn't, knew that wasn't necessarily what he wanted to do eventually, but he was really a thorough cleaner. And so as he reached kind of the end point of our program where we felt like we had helped him as much as we could, we set up an internship for him and he did an internship at a car dealership detailing cars. And he did really well with that. And he did so well that they even hired him for a summer and, and paid him a little bit more to do that. And so then that kind of took its course. It was just a seasonal job, so he couldn't stay on there forever. And so after that, we thought, well, you know, he's done an internship, he's done this job, what's next? And uh, we actually found uh, kind of a supply warehouse that um, as we were talking to them, they had a need for someone there. And so we put him there on an internship. And to start out with at the supply warehouse, he would just clean out all their trucks. He, you know, he would clean out and detail their trucks and wash them down and some of those things. Um, I don't know if he even had a driver's license, but he, you know, he was able to clean out all the trucks. And he got pretty good at that. And after a couple of months, you know, their trucks were just spotless. And, and so he said, okay, well, I've got the trucks clean and I'm keeping them clean, what else can I do? So then not only did they have him clean the trucks, but they had him then sweep out so the shop areas and some of the stuff in the warehouse. And so he was do, he was cleaning the trucks, he was cleaning the warehouse, did that for a while. And he just, I mean, kept getting faster and more efficient and finding better ways to do things. And so eventually they decided to hire him. And so they hired him and he was still cleaning their trucks, cleaning their warehouse, but then he still had extra time on his hands because he was getting more efficient and he was working smart. And so um, he helped them to organize some of the shelves in their warehouse. And so, it, so that people could find things better because they, they didn't have really a good system on, on how to organize and inventory things. And he just started kind of tinkering with that. And eventually he did it to the point where he reorganized their whole inventory and warehouse organization system to the point that they were able to save, I don't know how much money, I don't know if it's thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars, but they saved a lot of money because of some of the systems he created. And, you know, and our whole thing was, okay, we, originally, we don't know what this guy can do. You know, he's probably not gonna work at Disneyland, but what else can he do? Well, he, you know, over, over time, he really organized this place. And I think that now he has been, he still works there. And he's been working there, I think about four or five years. And so that's a great success story because when he came to us, he hadn't had a job, he was unemployable, he wasn't sure what he could do. And then went through a program and years later, you know, he really has a job that he loves and enjoys and he's treated well and he's a valuable part of their team. Um, work brings identity, it brings purpose, obviously it brings some income and financial benefits, um, but also just understanding that he has value, that he can contribute, that he can make a difference. Ha having him feel needed by that company is tremendous. We're building people, we're building lives. Um, but again, I'm, I'm quick to say it's, it's not me, I'm, I'm an instrument or or a helper in that because what we're really doing is helping people to help themselves.